I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Denise. This is the kitchen in Denise's brand new home. And this is what the kitchen looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. to Denise's dream home. She called Design Inc. to make sure she gets a dream kitchen. Of course, this mud and these shoes, that's more of a nightmare. The yard's looking beautiful today. <laughs> well, this isn't a very small kitchen. No, it's quite large, actually. Oh, my goodness. So is it a renovation or it's a new build? No, brand new. OK. But and we want it to look like it's been here for 100 years. A lot of people now, in order to get a traditional look, are doing a combination of some painted and some wood. Do you like that idea, or? Probably not. I okay. think we should stick with all wood. I think the one the thing that we noticed immediately is the connection to the dining room. So are you a really neat cook? <laughs> well, this doesn't yes. really, this is, this is somewhat, uh, I guess, unforgiving. The other problem is that the cabinetry has to look really good or it'll bring down the entire space. So as far as the sort of Eden area goes, is this an area for entertaining casually? Is it just for family meals? What are you looking for there? Uh, mostly family meals. Okay. And some of Laura's friends that come in the evening after school or after skating. Okay. But mostly it'll be just the three of us. Can you turn it <laughs> off? Ah, producer. And this this existing kitchen layout shows it coming across the wall, coming out as a peninsula, and returning back. My humble opinion? At it coming towards The plan for the peninsula ruins the flow of the room. The point of an island is it sort of gives you the command of the kitchen and the whole space. If I were the cook of the house, I would want to be able to stand here to have the best view out over the swimming pool. One of the key features in a Georgian-style house is the symmetry. So if we could make it so that everything was more centered on this wall, that might end up giving us sort of a better flow and a more interesting look when all said and done. And I would say the best thing for us to do is probably, you know, do some drawings up to show you and then let you choose based on that. Oh, great. So, Thank you. Right on. <laughs> Let's get started. Ugh. so the wrong footwear. I've never done a kitchen that is as big or um, that I think will be as formal. So I think this has great potential to be absolutely drop dead beautiful and a true showpiece for the house. And when it comes to showpieces on my team, no one spends money better than Tommy. Right. Here's the sort of floor plan, right? Okay. Giant sink wall, yeah. big island, long range wall. In addition to the island, there are a few other things from the original drawings that have got to change. So I think we eliminate the sort of harvest table because everything's feeling like it's all gonna be massive rectangles, right? I have thought for a while that that table should either be oval or round. Okay, if this is as dressy as I see it shaping up to be, mm -hmm. I think this has to be a mahogany door with a raised frame and then crotch mahogany in the center. I'm crazy about that idea. If we're gonna go for something really dressy, it has to be a frame style kitchen, meaning that it is built like a piece of furniture. Sounds beautiful, elegant, luxurious, custom, and expensive. It's probably twice as much for the cabinetry to go frame style versus frameless. However, all of your other costs are the same. The cost of your counters, your sink, your faucet, those are fixed costs. I don't think that most people would make the jump that by upgrading that one element, you are elevating every single other thing in the room without paying out more. A project this big is a lot for just two designers. Maybe it's time for a trio. And with Tommy and Natalie together, it's the perfect combination of beauty and brawn. Oh man, wrong shoes again. At a local service. I want to just do a little bit of brainstorming here. I think it would be better if the refrigerator was tucked in the corner. Okay. Because if you put a refrigerator here, this is a really short. Then there's not room for your countertop. Space. 
Like, I think we have to go all the way. Absolutely. Floor to ceiling. Big crown. What does that do when you see the white plaster coming across and then it meets up with wood? We can have the exact same profile of plaster. Yes. Replicated in wood. Okay. Okay, so it can tie in, it'll match perfectly. But do we paint out that wood to be the same color as the white plaster, or does that... No, I think it's wood. It's difficult to imagine, but I know what I'm doing. It'll look amazing. So what if the island is the same length also as that wall? Right. About nine feet. Five, sure. A 45 square foot island. That's, Whoa. that's larger than most people's really big. Yeah, I think that's the size of my kitchen. Yeah. We're gonna go with a range because it's more traditional. Then we'll do something really unusual with the vent hood. We have this piece that we bought for the entrance hall that has oval paneling on right. the front. So, so we you could do... do it going horizontally exactly. across the fan. Tommy, if you can look for, find a table and chairs, okay. a rug. Natalie, let's think about plumbing fixtures, yep. countertops, mm -hmm. backsplash. So I'll do all the function, sink. Tommy can do yeah. beauty. Yeah, <laughs> you're beauty, you're functional. A designer's dream kitchen. Oh, They're not gonna love it when they get the bill, but. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you, let's see if we can make our vision a reality. Design Inc. is helping Denise build her dream kitchen. Well, this isn't a very small kitchen. How big is it? Big. And how big a chance are we taking? Huge. Happily, Denise has trust, confidence, and vision. It's one thing to tell people, oh, it's going to look really great, but it's going to cost a lot of money. And it's another thing to explain to them exactly why it's expensive. Our big expense is custom mahogany cabinetry, Ooh. which has just arrived. That looks great. Great, but not perfect. There's a cabinet that I'm pretty sure they were all supposed to be divided doors, but the door is a single sheet of glass. And Denise was really concerned about having glass to start with, so I don't think we've got the right door. So I'm sure they had a divider on it, but I'm wondering if it just got lost on the power plans at some point. Well, it's a 50-50, because my sketch had it, but obviously when I approved the plans, they didn't have it, so. I'm surprised I wouldn't have noticed that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was probably just so excited about the way it looked that I signed my name to it and said, yeah, build it! What are you doing, Ian? Well, we're just gonna see what's behind here. What, you got, we got, drain? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta pull it over. Ah, uh, the old drain's in the wrong place. Uh, it's always something. That is beautiful. These, Denise, we're supposed to have Mullions in them. Oh, it's going to be divided up because I know you were concerned originally about having too much glass. Absolutely right. So um, Ross and I talked about it, so he can make new doors that have the dividers. But what I've asked them to do first is just install them as is because the doors can just be changed. Okay. So we can take a look at them once they're in okay. and then make that decision. Well, I don't know. Right now it looks amazing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's a great answer. Yeah. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. It's more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. This is a custom canopy for the vent hood. We've got our crotch mahogany. Like, uh. I've never seen a kitchen in crotch mahogany. It's uh, really our opus. It's like, we've never done anything like it before. So, the true creative spirit really comes through when everyone is excited to be part of the team. Now, what's next? I don't really want to wait eight weeks for reproduction furniture if I could go out and find an antique today. So I thought maybe I'd hit the streets and see what I find. Correction, what Tommy and I find. What about these? I think they're really chic looking. I love the leather um, strapping details. Are they a bit pricey? I don't think they're comfortable enough for the price. How much are they? 1500 each. Okay, see you later. What about these? They're a really good deal for what they are. I love them. Right? Rich Maybe color. Oh, the higher back is nice. I'm ready for takeoff. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a counter height stool. Nope, this is bar height. Is it? Yeah, it's six inches higher. Stools are generally geared to be either very contemporary or very cottagey. Mm -hmm. So finding something that is sophisticated and dressy enough, yet comfortable, is going to be a real challenge. So we may not have any choice but to think about altering, altering something. If we cut six inches off the legs, then it will be counter height. 
Okay, what I like about this table is that it's a little bit more rustic. We don't want the kitchen to seem so formal right beside the formal dining room. Yeah. And it's 20% off. It's a, it's a good It's price. a good buy for my money. I think and you should bring it out money, so. <laughs> But you know what? It's nice that you treat it as your money. What about this table? Rosewood. It's quite striking. It's really beautiful. It's five times the price. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. It's perfect for the uh, cabinet right. doors. Look at the base on it. Very beautiful. This is twice the price of the reproduction. Okay. Which was really country farmhouse and half the price of the last one we saw. This would be my pick. These things are insanely heavy. Now let's lug some of our finds back to Denise's so we can try them in the space. And what a space it is. It's coming along nicely. Nice. Wow, where's Phil? You like it? Eh? Do you like it? I love it. Really? Yeah. Best kitchen ever? Yeah, and it's a, you like that, eh? Let's see how that antique table works. That's the one, guaranteed. Gorgeous. But is it unanimous? Yeah, very much so. Even our movers have design savvy. We need to make sure we perfectly vacuum this because then we have to lay down the rugs to see whether they actually fit. This one could go with the red tones in the dining room carpet. Okay, well, let's lay this second one on top. This is three times the price. Okay. So I have a feeling we need to learn to fall in love with the other one. Although I'm thinking that the blue in this might be absolutely perfect. Okay. Yeah. see what's three times the price. That has your blue in it, Sarah. Your wall. I know, it really has the wall color. Wouldn't you know it, the most expensive one always looks best. I think the softness of the upholstery is much nicer. Do you see what I I think I know exactly what you're going to say. What? The scroll at the top of the leg they and the scroll at the bottom of the leg. Isn't that amazing? It's brilliant. It looks so good together. They look like they belong together. But they're so different. Yeah. Natalie, what do you think of this? Ooh. I love it. Considering that I really, really would love Denise to pick the more expensive carpet, giving her these less expensive fixtures will make a difference, I hope. They're a great price for mm -hmm. what they are. Where does this go? That... <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm in. I love it. I'm in based on scale. Yeah. I think the bar stool is great. Oh, this is great. You know what they can do, Natalie? They can take the yes. detail at the bottom and just take some length off the shaft and remain, you know, that little cap detail at the bottom can remain. <laughs> Uh, you yeah. said shaft. Yeah. <laughs> There's clearly a reason we're not called maturity ink. I guess what's different about this kitchen for us is that it was an experiment and we've never done it before and I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy that it's an experiment that's worked out. Of course, the experiment's not quite finished. If we were gonna do this right, what would the right order be? The plaster crown moldings were installed first and that makes it harder to do the mahogany. The wood is far more expensive and I can't take the chance on something going wrong with the mahogany. But the molding saga isn't over yet. Oh. The success of a kitchen like Denise's is in the details, or in this case, the moldings. What does that do when you see the white plaster coming across and then it meets up with wood? Well, it would have looked great if the plaster hadn't gone up first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull down the plaster and we're gonna go with the wood. At least our clients are still impressed. You know, no problems. Everybody talks about building a home as being a headache and uh, it really has been. It's been very, very smooth. Ling, did you get your wood moldings installed? Oh no, what happened? Solid mahogany crown moldings that were made to perfectly match the plaster crown moldings do not match. The crown didn't add up with the plaster crown that was going around the room, and also the profile of the crowns weren't perfect to my liking, so we had to send them back to Montreal. And it's now going to be two weeks till we have new moldings made. The clients have been unbelievable. It's been very, very smooth. And I don't say that about every client, or at least I don't mean it, but I say it about every client. As long as we have to wait for the new crown molding, we might as well get counterproductive. My challenge is that I have an island and it's five by nine feet. Oh, wait, what's this here? That's the Costa Green. Costa Green. That's uh, Lady Onyx. This is, oh, this is the marble that's supposed to look like Onyx, yeah. right? And that's if you're trying to make a bold statement, huh? This is the best slabs you've had in 40 years? Yeah. And what makes it so good? It kind of looks like a heart rate monitor. That's all right. My heart's gonna have palpitations when I get the brace for this island. 
we're pretty quick, so if somebody points us in a direction and gives us three to choose from, we'll choose one and move on. Okay, John, let's put you to the test. So we have a couple of options. Not so much on that one, huh? I find this really, really strong. Busy, yes. Okay. Yeah. I think this is a bit light, don't you? A bit light. A bit mm -hmm. light. This is Botticino. I like this. I like, I like the characteristics this. of this. You like yeah. the characteristics like of this, this too. Yeah, because it's but he light, says but it's not. This is the nicest dark. slab they've had in 40 years. Decision made. And now, while Philip installs the crown molding, Tommy and I will find curtain fabric. Is that peanut butter? No, it's maple. Anything to fuel oh. the creative fire. Can we put some starfish in Denise's kitchen? I like them. I like that quite Sorry, a bit, I can't but... hear you for all the cooking in your mouth. <laughs> no monkeys, no ladybugs, no strawberries, no spiders. How about... No elephants. How do you feel about bumblebees, though? Mm, no. Mm, turtles? No. Snakes? No. Kittens? No kittens. Horses? Ducks? Not so much the ducks. You said no monkeys, but these monkeys have very dark eyes. Tommy's not into the animal kingdom today, but I think the monkeys are a perfect accent for such a sophisticated room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's cookies. That was all the food that the production is allowing me to have all day. Ooh. The kitchen is actually coming together. It's Thursday, and Tuesday it's going to be done. That's good news. It's amazing. There's so many colors in it. What one issue we got, though, with the marble here? Uh-huh. It's a little tight going around the sink. That's not good news. What do you mean it's a little tight? Like, it's a little tight. The sink's not going to fit in. Well, we did a site measure and the sink was here. Yes. Not it. Not it. You got it. Not it. Not it. Not it. Not it. <laughs> the drawings haven't changed. The sink didn't grow. While they figure out how to fix that, Natalie and I are going to talk backsplash. I like the look of the herringbone. I also like the look of the 2 by 4 I think they're pretty interesting in the crema. But these are both home. Can we get this in a polished finish? Sweetie, darling, do you have anything in polished in the crema? Please say yes. Please say yes. Please say yes. No, nothing? Oh. You're killing me. So much for finishing on Tuesday. Denise's kitchen was so close to completion. Everything fit perfectly except the kitchen sink. You know what? The sink was here when they came to do the site measure. The marble countertop was too big. Make it right. So Luigi's people recut it to size. Of course, we've still got to get this huge marble slab onto the island. Easy. This slab weighs in at 800 pounds. That's heavier than eight Tommy's. Huge. Meanwhile, we decided to go with the herringbone on the backsplash and honed rather than polished because, frankly, we don't want anything to take away from the showpiece island. That was hard. And now, all that remains is for designing to add the designer accents. Tom and I have made up a little list. Mm -hmm. We have all their silver. We're just going to do a quick little Okay. Make sure it's all gleaming and looking fantastic. Other than that, it looks like just yeah. dust, 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 clean. white down, clean. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. Some draperies being finished. Basically, we just need to pull it together. We need to not be able just to do the it. project manager. He's also the curtain installer. Curtain He'll do anything. We rolled out the blue carpet. Egged on by Tommy, Denise agreed to go with the more expensive one because it looks the best. Even in a traditional kitchen, it's really important to do something that appears unexpected. And that explains the introduction of the crotch mahogany, which automatically elevates the whole tone and the feeling and the formality of this kitchen. We need to pick up all the dishes, OK? We need to get the glassware. Mm -hmm. These are perfect. Just because you have a beautiful dining room doesn't mean that you necessarily want to entertain all of your guests in it. If you just want to have one or two people over, you may want to have a smaller option. There isn't a single thing in here that is less than exquisite. Oh. 
when I designed this island that if it had been just a few inches bigger, I would not have been able to find a slab that actually fit. This is the largest it could possibly be at five by nine feet because most marble doesn't come any bigger than that. So in the end, I was really lucky. The woodwork and the craftsmanship that went into this, that you know, and you, you know, you open up a drawer and it automatically does that soft thing. You know, I don't have to do this. I mean, you know, all those little things, you just go, there was a lot of time and effort spent, so you know. Personally, I am most pleased with the introduction of the crotch mahogany panels. It was something that our cabinet maker had never done before. For them to have done something that they thought was amazing makes me feel so happy because we all share in the joy of how great it looks when it's done. I could not have imagined this. <laughs> I wanted it something spectacular, and I'm not disappointed, but I don't think I could have imagined this. Yeah, this came out great. Came out fantastic. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Rob. This is Rob's very yellow kitchen in his new house. And this is what Rob's kitchen looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. purchased his first home and is moving in tomorrow. Life is getting a little hectic, so he's requested a morning pick-me-up. Oops. Bill and Rob's coffee. I don't promise it's still hot. How are you? Congratulations on your new home. Yeah. Or... What a cutie. I've known Rob a long time, and I'm thrilled he's taken this huge step. OK. Oh my gosh. You're obviously keeping the yellow. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more yellow. Yeah. The yellow's got to go. What about the floor? The floor is um, it's a little bit bright, too. I think it okay. should go. What do you like? What don't you like? What do you want to do to it? I'd say modern, definitely funky. OK. Do you do a lot of cooking? Do you want yeah. to be able to do a lot of entertaining? Yep, I do a lot of cooking and a fair amount of entertaining, too. Yeah. OK. In there, there's just a living room. So this has to be the, the dining room right. and, and the, the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. So dining on this uh, side, on presumably, sort of? Presumably, yeah. Look, how big is your table? The table's at about um, around uh, 80 inches long. Big table, small kitchen, no problem. If I can move the appliances maybe on, onto this side, I don't know how much room I'm going to have. Moving the stove means relocating the gas line. And do you have a dishwasher? Do you need no. a dishwasher? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. You need a right dishwasher. Right now, I'm the dishwasher. Stove, fridge, dishwasher, and sink. That's a lot of stuff to put in this run. We have to use every inch of what we have available yeah. here for maximum storage. Imagine if you actually put here um, painting course. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to be doing all the painting and whatnot, and they, I'm sort of a little bit handy, so I can do that. If you did a cabinet that came on this side and on that side, that so it perfect, could sort of yeah. be a dish, yep. sort of double pantry. There's one thing also I was thinking about, if, if it's possible to put a uh, maybe a wine rack. Yeah. Sure. We got plenty of space. If you're going to use this both for prep and for entertaining, it has to be sort of welcoming enough yeah. that it makes the right statement as opposed to sitting in the kitchen. Rob's kitchen is going to be a bit of a jigsaw to put together. Come to think of it, this neighborhood's a maze to get out of. Are you comfy back here? <laughs> and when it comes to puzzles on my team, Natalie's the one for the job. I love this on eight. 22 and 3 quarter inches wide. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous tape measure well, ever. Well, it's light. My purse was what, 35 pounds. <laughs> huh? That was graceful. Shut up, Dave. Yeah, it's nine feet. <laughs> right through the end. <laughs> I gotta go visit Rob's basement. <laughs> Speaking of which, even the basement's cute. I know it's great. Here's our gas line. So all we need to do is extend the copper. We run it across here. And right across. And all the way through. Perfect. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? That means we can easily move the stove. I love this place. Woo. Uh, watch your head. Bye, Rob. Oh. <laughs> watch your arm, too. Get him a new door. 
Let's start with the floor. Really interesting product. Mm -hmm. It clicks into place. So it's an easy so you installation. Can take it with you. So Rob can maybe do it. So Rob can do it. Yeah. Portable floor. Who knew? Are these for colors? Colors for you to look at. There's two spectrums here. One yeah. is the more watery, I like the kind color. of soft blues. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that seems too cottagey, too fresh. Yeah. And I kind of, I have to say, I sort of like where he's going. Mm -hmm. So I like these tones. And instead of using the bright green, maybe we go soft. with the smoky blue. So more smoky along, green. like if this married that, maybe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The only thing we do need to consider is that he has this collection of ceramics. So I want to make thing, sure yep. that we know what these ceramics are. I don't want to find out after the fact that his collection is, you know, red and ochre and like chocolate. Of course. Because I think if we could make it, obviously if he's been collecting them for a while, I think it's really nice to have mm -hmm. a collection to work off because it's a small space. Yeah, it's a very small space. So it's time for me to have a quick meeting with our cabinet maker, Val to figure out how to maximize every inch. As you can see, his living room is so small. This has to be dining room as well. Mm -hmm. So it's tight. Yeah. Since you don't have the width for the countertop, so if we give a little bit of extra depth, it means that nothing's kind of compromising the amount of countertop space you have. Yep, that's perfect. What I want to do is I want to make this a 30 inch deep counter. If it were to me. To max out counter depth. Yeah, as much as I'm possible. really concerned about making this work without having additional, you know, cabinet space. As for Rob's pottery collection, it perfectly matches with our color palette. Rob has a really neat collection of all this vintage Russell Wright pottery. So we want to be able to have a little bit of display mm -hmm. in there. Rob also wants to put cabinets on the other walls. The only thing I'm thinking is on that east wall, that's a concrete wall. Want to check it out? Let me know. That's fine. We can just put uh, concrete screws in there. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Easy. Okay. That's not a problem. And we also had the cold air return that goes down to your basement. We're just going to have to cut it and put it somewhere That's no else. problem. That can come out of the kick. Put a grill on the kick. So just, there you go. It's just sucking in air. It's not a big deal. Thanks for stopping by. I tell you, Val can solve any problem. I'm not smart enough, clearly, to lock this door. It's a problem. Almost any problem. Try it. Try it the other way. Try it down the outside. No, it's a safe neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it just doesn't lock. You want to take a crack at this, Marco? No. Mm. This was supposed to be a quick meeting. Despite the fact that we all know that it doesn't work, we're all just going to keep trying it. Is that well, the idea? It might just somehow snap. Val and I can't figure out how to lock his back door. Well, if we're going to be stranded here, at least it's a kitchen. We'll have food for the first few days. <laughs> I'm not feeling very intelligent right now. <laughs> Rob has a little problem. It's so narrow. He has a small kitchen. We could definitely get another 12 inches on top of what you have now. I might be able to help with the kitchen if I actually wasn't no. trapped in it. I opened the door to get some air and now I can't figure out how to get it locked. Okay, so close it. Yeah. I'm just pulling in the... Oh. Things always look easier on TV. <laughs> I just spoke to the kitchen people. He said, can you get up right now and approve the color sample? And I said, well, why don't I just send a courier? And he said, well, um, production kind of got ahead of me. And they've, sprayed the they've already started spraying the kitchen. He's like, so I need someone to get here right now and tell me if it's OK. I guess I'm popping in my so car. can you go up and check it out? I like it when a project gets going quickly, but this might be a little too fast. It's exactly what we're going for. It's blue. It is. There's a little green in it, though, I think. Do you think that's masculine enough? Yes, quite. There's a lot of gray in there. Two women and a gay man are discussing whether a color is masculine. Yeah, it's not a color that I would have picked um, myself. So you don't think it's too feminine? No. I think if it was more of a baby blue, it would be too feminine. But that looks like a masculine blue. With a dark stone countertop, maybe the slate. You know what, can I take a look at the um, penny round glass backsplash and a slab of dark countertop, mm -hmm. and then we'll know for sure. Flooring. Right. For the Pennies. backsplash. Right. I grabbed a smooth black slate. Okay. This is the... It stinks. Kobe silver. Smell that. Design is more than just visual. Rob's kitchen has to smell good, too. That's good. 
I find this to be a most unusual kitchen combination. Most people wouldn't paint like a smoky blue mm -hmm. and an ochre. And I think that the way it's gonna Love go it. with the floor, the only thing we're gonna need to be able to tweak, you know, towards the end is let's not commit to the wall color. Mm -hmm. Natalie has to run the colors by Rob. Okay. He's still not sure about the blue cabinets, but he's willing to trust us. I was overwhelmed by everything else in the house, and just to have someone come in and sort of take the reins of it was, um, was a joy. And when we take the reins, that means it's time to break stuff. Rob is a good recycler, so he has friends that have spoken for everything in the kitchen, pretty much. It takes longer to salvage, instead of just walking in with a sledgehammer. Bring the enforcer into this. Well, we salvaged most of the kitchen. Next up, the floors. I've got to see this movable floor option for myself. But first, I've got to check out Rob's sweet bride. That is so fun. Can this stuff just go um, right on top of this existing floor? Right. They slide into each other. Yep. And then it clicks together. These are just laying down. Can point. we pull out a few of each one so, so we can decide what the pattern's going to be? Absolutely. Yeah, so it would take you guys a morning, but I've started out by putting them together wrong. That's okay. That's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Can we put the creamy one? On this side? Yeah. Not bad, but let's make Graham work for this sale. Now let's try it in stripes. I'll get the hang of this yet, Graham. Well, it's pretty straightforward. So I can't oh, do it either. Oh, sure. I yeah, can't do it either. So. Yeah. OK, yeah, I'm happy with that. I like the stripe. That's great. The pieces of our puzzle are starting to fit into place. Oh, done. Love it. And the kitchen guys just pulled up. And the kitchen cabinetry, done before I know it, shows up right on time. Val's crew get it all installed just as quickly, right in time for the countertops, which also arrive right on time, just like clockwork. It's like a glove. You would almost think I templated it. That's right. Oh my, what's going on here? Well, maybe not a glove. More like mittens. I should trim the stone. Note to self, get Nat a better tape measure. This is the most ridiculous tape measure well, ever. Well, it's light. In the meantime, if we want to keep this kitchen on schedule, we've got to do some trimming and find things that will take it over the top. Gosh, it's hard finding the right thing, huh? Yeah. Rob's kitchen redesign is definitely moving along. I love this place. But some things fit together. OK, yeah, I'm happy with that. I love this right. And some things don't. I should trim the stone. Does it have to go back to the shop to do that? No. No. That's good news. While the guys fix the counter, Natalie and I scour the town for furniture and lighting. I think he needs a more chic chair. That's comfortable. It is. It fits. It hugs. Yeah. Like the chairs. The uh, aluminum chairs. Do you have four? I, I just sold out. I have two, really? three in the store here. You have three. That's uh, figures. I think we need a mobile. I think a mobile would be great. Right? We need that yellow mobile. These are perfect. Look at that. It's this whole color scheme. Blue and gold. Yeah. What that brass one? There's something really new about this one. Totally weird. It's halfway there, but yeah. not exactly what it's, we need. It's kind of filling the lot, but not 100%. I dare you. Get on it. The health o Is this in pounds? No, it can't be. Yeah, it's, it, it's in pounds. It's good. It only oh, goes to 90s. Kids. Oh, it's gone around three times. <laughs> Gosh, it's hard finding the right thing, huh? Yeah. It's interesting. It works with his Nelson. Does he have a Nelson? No, oh, he oh. wanted... Yeah. This one in his living room. Oh, he does? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then I think this would be great yeah. with the Nelson bubble it would work. We have a solution, which is good Oval. because my neck is starting to hurt. Okay, I like that. Okay, let's ask him. Now that we've seen the light, Natalie's headed back to Rob's to take care of some heavy lifting. I'm strong like well, man. Oh, yeah. oh. In heels, no less. Skin. 
That sounded like a tight fit. Boo boo. Ouch. Oh, it's all okay now. Got the mad assist. Thank you. Just in no, case. No, no pat in the back, no nothing. Thumbs aside, we're really in good shape. It's the first time I've been injured all year. We can start the electrical and plumbing as soon as we have the new gas line hooked up. But we're in a bit of a rush because this place has to be done the day after tomorrow. And to make room, Vito's moving Rob's favorite retro piece out of harm's way. Natalie and the trades are going through their laundry list of things to do until... Did we check to see if the gas line wasn't in the way? We have just a slight problem. We need to kick it over. Okay. It's too low right now. See the, the fitting? Uh, the oven is not fitting in. We need to adjust the bracket. We can't get the oven in because of how low the gas line's hanging down. Because we don't want to mess around with the gas. So we will let the yeah. proper man do the gas. As long as Jimmy's waiting, we may as well have the electrician put up the blinds. Freeing Natalie to fix another unforeseen problem. I saw this weird color difference between the ceilings and the walls. I'm going to be doing all the painting and whatnot, and they, I'm sort of a little bit handy, so I can do that. And I think what happened is Rob was going on a business trip today and had the best intentions of throwing up one last coat and patching up some last little last minute things. And uh, he used the wrong paint color. Whoops. The only problem is, is that, you know, I've been in these guys' way and Jimmy and Mark are trying to get things done and we're trying to work around them. And then I have the gas guy coming back and, you know, unfortunately the backsplash couldn't be finished today. So Vito's coming back first thing in the morning. So I basically want to have every single thing that can be done done, save the backsplash. To get everything done on time, Nat has to put on her painter's cap. This leaves our intern, Lindsay, the dicey job of putting Rob's prize car back in the driveway. For your information, this car is easily twice as old as she is. Natalie truly is strong like bull. I'm strong like bull, man. The good news is we got the car back where it belongs. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. The bad news is we have no backsplash, the entire kitchen needs to be repainted, and it's the day before the deadline. Rob's kitchen needs our retro feel with a modern twist. Look at that. It's his whole color scheme. We're turning it around in record time. They've already started spraying the kitchen. Save for a few setbacks. And uh, he's the wrong paint color. Now that we've got the paint color straight, it's time for the final drive to get this room finished. Speaking of drive. Hey, I hear you had some fun with the car. Look at it! Isn't it awesome? You decide that you're going to make a meal? Oh, I might need my bench hood. Oh, there we go. That's powerful, huh? I love the color of the appliances, the yellow appliances. I love it. And look at his beautiful ceramics. And I think that they're perfect. However, Rob has nixed our lighting purchase in favor of something he already has. You can't exactly go wrong with no. the George Nelson bubble lamp. Vito, how long do you think you need till you're done? Great. No rush, but how long do you think you need? <laughs> About an hour. We might be able to pull this off today after all. What do you need to do and what should I handle? There's tons of ceramics. Okay. And then um, the let's figure out the table. Poor Larry ripped his finger off and got in the fridge in here. I had to like use my emergency first aid kit in the car. Should I call you a flow from now on? For all intents and purposes, I think this is a two person table. I don't think this should be cluttered up with four chairs. If we only need two chairs instead of four, that gives me an idea. Thank you. What sets this kitchen apart is the fact that it has a vintage inspiration, but it has a very contemporary execution. I need to hang the draperies. Mm -hmm. Great. 
and then we'll just sort of clean up, move out, put it all Spread back it together all back so that when he arrives back, it looks nothing short of spectacular. I agree. We wanted to make use of every single inch of possible space, which is part of the reason why the cabinetry goes so high and close to the ceiling. If you're only gonna have one counter surface, you better make sure it is both beautiful and can stand the test of time. There's so many different textures, so many texture of the slates to the backsplash with the glass pennies. There's lots of things to rest your eye on. This is like a before and after. Yeah. This is the old kitchen. <laughs> Gosh, I think I had one of these in university. beautiful open display for wine glasses, plus we have huge pantry storage, wine storage, and a table that's right underneath the window in the sunshine. Holy cow, ladies, this is nice. Did you dress for the room or what? I, I didn't know. know. We had a really awesome inspiration and jumping off point, which is a collection of vintage dishes which Rob already had. And the second I saw them, I knew that this was not going to be a white, a cream, or a beige kitchen, at least if I had anything to do with it. The striped floor, at first I was a little bit leery about it, but it breaks up things and actually makes the room look a little bit bigger. It's kind of a more quirky color palette. Everybody who's seen it sort of has said, woo, and they would have never have picked it themselves. But once you see it up on the wall, it looks good. It's completely fresh and crisp and modern at the same time. It's cool. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Tim. This is Tim's vintage kitchen. And this is Tim's gourmet kitchen, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. I'm off to see Tim and I'm already behind. So I have Kate and Vito meet me there. Sorry I'm late. You been waiting long? It's a big year for Tim. This is his first home and his first renovation. And he's getting married in a few months. Hi. Whoa. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, Sarah. How are you? Good. He needs a kitchen that's going to make an impression on his guests and not his wallet. Creaky, creaky. Yeah. yeah How old is 80 years. OK. What do you like? What don't you like? I don't like anything about the kitchen. The color scheme is not good. It's not laid out well. Okay. It's not in good condition. What do you want to do here? Just rip everything out? Rip everything out. Are you interested in combining it with the dining room? I kind of want to keep the dining room formal. OK. But if there's anything we can do to open it up, you see the breakfast nook over here. If it's not structural. Like okay. structural equals expensive, right? Yeah, yeah generally. That's a concern. <laughs> Could be a bit of a problem. Okay. But like taking down walls and stuff, we can do that. Maybe we could open up a section on this wall. We'll allow more light to travel into the that stairwell, but it won't be as expensive as taking out the whole wall. Counter space, I'm assuming that's a bit of an issue. Counter space would be huge. If we could take the cabinetry all the way down to the window, underneath the window, and return it back for a sort of better flow. Better flow. OK, right. do you want to have a seating area? I mean, right now, you've got this little sort of picnic table. Maybe bar stools. Okay. We do a lot of drinking. So sort of for entertaining. <laughs> entertaining, yes. What I think we could do is try and figure out better placement of the appliances. <laughs> and you? Where, where's he going to fit into all of this? That's right. This is our pseudo dog <laughs> area. That would be nice. Aren't you glad we stopped by? <laughs> this project needs a keen eye on the budget and some hand holding. Kate's on the plate. Well, he didn't cry. <laughs> A great start. Okay, Vito, let's take a look. We're wasting no time. Our contractor, Vito, is here to set this reno in motion. This, is this structural? It might be. I'd like to take this whole chunk out. Okay. Make sure that this is not load bearing. Okay, or so you're just gonna get out a hammer? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Let's <laughs> we'll start with this one. I love this stuff. 
I'm feeling something furry up here. <laughs> it's good then? Yeah, we're going this way with the joysticks. So this wall is going to come out. And this wall. You want to use a big hammer? Sure. I never seem to have the right footwear for the job. And we're safe. We're good. <laughs> I think probably the dog is the biggest concern just because there's going to be demolition going on. He's used to sleeping all day. Let's review this in a month and see if I have the smile on my face. When it rains, it pours. To add to the stress of the renovation, Tim's also getting married soon. It's a crazy time. Someone I know recently went through it herself. I wouldn't want to tackle both at once. The heavens have opened up. Knocking together a cost-conscious concept without sacrificing quality and style is challenge numero uno. Where should we start? Let's start with the floor. China white slate. I think it'd be really, really great because of the dog. Yep. I think it'd be very forgiving in what it would hide. Mm -hmm. The one thing to think about with the dog, we may want to go with the smoother tiles because if you go and try and mop over top of this over time, all these little crevices are just gonna kinda get filled up with dirt. Okay. The other thing would be to make sure that it gets properly sealed sure. so that the slate isn't absorbing the dirt over time. Use it in big slabs and a simple pattern that's easy to install so it's not too expensive. Save a bit of money, put it towards doing a decorative mosaic backsplash, either in marble or in glass, and then appliances stainless. Yeah, and I think he will be in complete agreement with that. I think that looks great, great. thanks. Tim could use one of these. The demolition is in full swing. And as always, a little dusty. Now that the kitchen's opened up, we can really see what we're dealing with. Wow! Woo. Okay, come on. Don't tell me that wasn't worth it. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Uh, Kate, I think Bailey's got your sample bag. <laughs> Bailey, the design and dog. Time to size up the situation. Tim, ever helpful, is now going to see firsthand where everything might go. So if you come out 25 inches here, we'll go standard depth. I'm gonna have silver tip boots in a minute. This seems tight to me. This is a tight kitchen for having stools in. We've lost a couple of walls already, but I'm thinking of going even further. If you want to create a more open feeling in here and you want the light to travel better, this is how to do it. We only need 14 inches for an overhang for bar stools. In and that's there. one thing he did really want is a place to kind of lounge and, you know. If we could take this out, we could have an overhang and we could have stools here. <laughs> He'll be needing some new tea towels <laughs> in his new kitchen. Time for me and Kate to find out how much this new idea is going to cost. Let's hope Tim can take it. Can you, can you feel my heart rate going up as we talk? Tim's going to rue the day he ever let us into his home. Tim's kitchen renovation has been a breeze so far. All we've done is tear it apart. There actually haven't been too many surprises per se, like, oh my God, we found this wall and we've got to, you know, do some structural things to do it. There haven't been any surprises like that. But we want to keep going, which may drive up the price. We need a quote from Vito to open the entire kitchen up to the dining room and living room. Okay, so this is what? The first idea is just to cut it, cut through the existing lath and plaster with like a circular saw or something, new trim. No wainscoting. Okay, and what is that number again? 4,000 bucks, maybe a bit high. Vito's there, they're demolishing the closet, and if he wants to do this, it can happen today. Let's see if Tim goes for it. He's ready to go, so we'll need a decision quickly. I think we're gonna have to find Tim another solution. Well, he didn't cry. <laughs> I think Sarah called it the might as well syndrome, where it's like, okay, you've done this, this, and this, Let's do that. I just heard back from Vito, yes. and now he says that what he can do is remove the door casings, remove the top piece of trim on the wainscoting, okay. remove the walls and ceiling above the wainscoting, and then replace some of the trim for 2700 I think that's the plan. <laughs> Good news for all. With that, another wall comes tumbling down. Can you feel my heart rate going up as we talk? <laughs> Including the dining room has doubled the scope of this project and significantly increased the expense. But it's going to stream light across the entire first floor. 
Now that the walls are gone, we can finally set the kitchen plan in gear. So is it okay to, to take measurements from this point? Definitely. As long as there's going to be no more changes. Uh, uh, you know, anything. I don't think there's really any more walls to pull down. Or add it. Or add it. Could it. Could it could be one. It could be one. Which one? Does this seem closed into you? Should this come out and just... Does Tim know what you're doing to his house? They're going to seal it up. And they've just lost the space. Yeah, take it out. Just need this wall here, then. And it all makes sense, but, you know, it's an extra thousand dollars here. Tim's going to rue the day he ever let us into his home. Oh, you might as well do that. An extra thousand dollars there. Even as the budget heads north, Tim's not in the mood to skimp. It's marble countertops or nothing. So this is one here, Creme and Marcel. Boring. <laughs> See this, I like the texture on it. Okay. Okay. It would look like a cement countertop. Cement, <laughs> asphalt, yeah. we do it all. <laughs> AstroTurf. <laughs> nice, let's keep thinking. We seem to be narrowing things down a touch. I think this piece could be interesting because I feel like the cabinet color is represented in this vein here. My only concern is that overall it's too light, too white. Yeah, you're gonna see it from a distance. And, right. Yeah. As Tim mulls over his options, back at his house, we've gone from taking down old walls to putting up new ones. And to keep costs in check, Tim's decided to pitch in wherever he can. Well, we're moving tile. We've run a little bit over budget, and I'm trying to save costs where I can. And uh, nobody told me they were this heavy. What was it, 2,000 pounds, I think, we moved? I'm bleeding. I took a chunk off the wall. Ouch! As Tim gets a workout, I need to work a few things out on progress with Kate. Jimmy has installed the heated floor pads. Yes. And Vito is coming by to do a scratch coat on top. Vito is going to complete the trim in the dining room area mm -hmm. so Tim can get working on that painting. He's decided to do the painting himself to save on the budget. It's more principal at this point. <laughs> we have decided on the cabinetry color. Okay. Which is that very nice. A little bit of a green tint, very yep. nice neutral. I like that. So what we need to do is choose some wall colors for the kitchen and now the dining room. I know that you had said before that Tim actually wanted to see some sense of color. Definitely. Gray blue, gray green. Mm -hmm. We could go sort of more bluey in the dining room yep. and more gray greeny Pretty. in the kitchen. But why don't you show him this range okay. and see what he thinks. Great. Get him some paint right yeah. and let him go wild. <laughs> Get rolling. Yeah. Okay. A beautiful day in Tim's neighborhood. We're looking at paint samples on the walls and Vito's cutting floor tiles. Okay, what have you got there on the wall? Hmm, that's why you test paint colors first. I find that blue is kind of freshy baby. Right. Well, especially that blue. So when I look at those two, and you've repeated the green back there in the kitchen, right? it ends up looking too smoky, kind of blue-green. And maybe what would be better is to start with a fan deck and pull out all the colors that you find in the stone. Okay. And maybe the fabrics will help us decide what to do in here. Thankfully, Tim's left the fabric choices to us. We like a blue coral for the dining chairs. It will complement the blues in the dining room and the green tones in the kitchen. What's the story? You've got two chairs here. Do these chairs get reupholstered and sprayed? Okay. Or do these chairs? Well, I'm thinking that the full cane back, the slightly wider seat and the slightly deeper seat yes. is slightly better for our slightly tall guy, right? To think about doing... As we pull together paint and fabrics, Tim gets a bit daredevil in his approach. It's his ticket. It's hazardous. I'm a menace to everybody else on the road, and should a police officer cruise by, I'd probably be in a lot of trouble. Much to Tim's surprise, his kitchen renovation is a victim of the domino effect. Okay, you've done this, this, and this. Let's do that. As the cost grows, he's doing what he can to help. I'm bleeding and his efforts have become ambitious, to say the least. Okay, that was a bad idea. It was a lot heavier than I expected. While the pressures of renovation haven't affected Bailey's appetite, they're having an impact on Tim's wallet. It's run a teeny bit over budget, and by teeny bit, I mean thousands and thousands of dollars. I guess it pays to have a good relationship with a loan manager. <laughs> 
At least Tim still has a sense of humor. Yeah, this poll changed my life. The power you can get out of this and the extension up to 13 feet. Boys and their toys. As Tim plays out a fantasy, Kate's trying to save him a few bucks by giving the dining table a new look for next to nothing. I'd like to have it matched to kind of the base color of this fabric, which is the fabric on the dining room chairs. I'd say that's greener than the base fabric, yeah. I would say. And I think I'm okay with that. I just need enough to do one small dining room table. Yeah, for sure. So what that you doing? You have court? something that's going to spray it for you already? Yep, I do. 10 minutes. 25 bucks. New table. Deal of the century. I know. So do you think we could have it for Tuesday or Wednesday next week? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop there. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to say yes because the camera's on. <laughs> the kitchen cabinets are ready and being installed, but Tim has yet to choose the countertops. This should be very interesting because Kate and Sarah are both out of town and they decided to let me um, select something on my own. This is Cali Cut the Gold Gray. This is probably what you're looking for. Okay. And then this is another Cali Cut the right behind you here. Oh, I don't know. It's called Cali Cut the Luchi Cosa. Okay. Now this is uh, Stichuario Venato. I was just told, come look at Calcutta. I didn't uh, know there were 50 so million Calcuttas. Uh-oh. I can see where this is heading. Hey, Kate, did you know that there's about 50 different kinds of Calcutta? Uh, no, I did not. I, I guess what I'm telling you is I'm kind of realizing that this probably isn't a decision I should make myself. Wise choice indeed. One of us should be giving Tim a hand once we return. Back in town, and it's time to see the progress at Tim's kitchen. Hello? Oh, I know I haven't seen you in so long. You're so excited. Oh, that wall looks good. Really good. The nods and the color look awesome. We've got to figure out how to finesse the transition between the kitchen and the dining room. Vito, how are we trimming this up? A minor detail with major visual impact. The chair rail that's coming in. The rooms have got to blend seamlessly. It's just that if you have things stop and start in the wrong place, it doesn't look like it's hot enough to have it in. Something's not quite right here. Remember the old saying, measure twice and cut once? Well, I get the feeling I better measure the space for the fridge one more time. Sarah's got the lock. Phew. It looks short. We're only days from completion, and there's still the matter of choosing marble for the countertops. Gotta lock this down right now. Oh yeah, that's too gray. We want something a bit warmer. Yeah, not good for a kitchen, no. So what's this one? It's called Calicata Luchicosa. That's it, that's the one. It's really nice, it's got some green. The Calcutta looks like Carrera to me. Piece of cake. Three of the four counters will be marble. The fourth, stainless steel. It's a nice offset to the marble and gives it an industrial edge. The marble countertops themselves are last to be installed. That doesn't look like it's fitting. Neither does that one. Or that one. Is that a saw? Suddenly, I'm worried. With a wedding on the horizon and a kitchen renovation tipping the scales, Tim's doing whatever he can to save money. Well, I guess it pays to have a good relationship with a loan manager. <laughs> the marble countertops don't quite fit, so we're making last minute adjustments. Like, I got a little palm sander. Maybe I can just try to sand that off. Tim's gonna be a pro by the time this kitchen's done. Oh yeah, you can see the gap there. It was tricky, but after a bit of trimming here and there, the countertops fit perfectly. Now all that's left is for designing to pull it all together. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. So Sarah's out doing some last minute running around. So I figured that the four of us could just get it done. So Nat, jobs. <laughs> you're gonna be on me. <laughs> You're gonna be on vacuuming, right? Your skills are legendary. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to be known for something. 
There are a ton of props I brought in. Okay, great. So I'd like you to sort through them. Choose what you think is best. Okay. Oh, that's a big pepper grain. <laughs> a few errands and I can hardly wait to see how the finishing touches are coming along. I just put a bottle of water upside down in my purse. Let's trust the table. So you, yes you are. Oh, the counters look nice, huh? One of the things we focused on was how to add additional counter space where there wasn't any before. It didn't have any good flow, and now we've got the raised bar, you've got the whole cleanup area, you've got a fantastic cooking area, and then I think one of the best additions is the sort of the peninsula that divides the stairs from the rest of the kitchen. This wall looks so good. It looks great. Um, now, Kate, did you end up getting some shelves to go here on this back wall? I brought them in. Yeah, I tried. Tim says no way. Hey, Bailey, what do you think? Do you think we should put shelves back there? I realize I'm talking to the dog, but that corner needs something. Why don't you guys dress the bar and then we'll hang it? Because I would assume that once the bar goes in, it's pretty much always going to be there. Kate, hey, these turned out really, really well with the stripes. Kate and I talked a lot about the colors. We wanted to make sure it was something that was slightly nostalgic and reminiscent of the character of the house. So we sort of went with sagey gray and smoky blues, but we updated it by adding elements like the coral fabric that's on the dining room chairs or the wide stripe that's on the silk drapes, and even adding a real punch of almost an acid green in the countertop appliances. That's what really makes it come alive for me. I lived through this crazy renovation. Three months almost to the day. When I first walked into the kitchen, I was floored. It was unbelievable. For me, the goal in any renovation is that it has to improve the overall flow and the appearance of all the adjoining spaces. Certainly the natural light that now comes in by opening up the walls and the lighting fixtures we put in. It's unbelievable what a difference it makes. I think it's amazing for a client to want to be involved. That really comes from two things. One, that I'm extraordinarily cheap. Crap. OK, that was a bad idea. It was a lot heavier than I expected. If you save a little bit on everything along the way, you'll have a little bit of money left over to splurge at the end. And it's the splurges at the end that create a showpiece. I think it's really important for young people in their first home to create something that's reflective of their youthfulness, their personality, their fun side. It doesn't have to be so serious. Why not make it so that when you're here, everybody feels relaxed and they have a good time? I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Eva and Patrick. This is their kitchen. This is Eva and Patrick's new open plan kitchen dining room, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. is a new mom in an older home about to go through her first renovation. Our job is to create a simple, functional, family-friendly kitchen without sacrificing style. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. All that Eva's told me so far is that she doesn't want beige. When you bought the house, were you planning on renovating it, or is it something that you figured out since you got here? We definitely thought we'd need to redo the kitchen. You was always planned on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you just were yeah. so sure about it. Didn't think of so soon. Okay. I think a big section over there is sort of misused where the stairs are. Right. I'd like to kind of utilize that space and maybe find a different place for our stairs. Okay. The kitchen itself, everything, the countertops, the cupboards, the lighting, all of it. We just don't like any of it. This is just getting bigger and bigger. Like our little sink here, it just leaks all the time. A little Barbie oven, <laughs> the smallest oven I've yeah, ever seen in my life. <laughs> so things like that, we just need okay. this whole area addressed. That sounds like more than just not beige to me. How are we gonna move forward? This seems a bit um, odd. 
They were much shorter back then. <laughs> if you eliminate this staircase, this can all drop back down. Right. Then you the truth is, the kitchen is just half of the equation. We're also looking for ways to connect the space with the adjacent dining room. We love our dining room. We just don't know if that's the best use of space in the house. If you took the wall out completely, you're going to lose a whole lot of cabinetry. Right. Yep. You could take it all out and put in an island, but you might get more storage on both sides if you did a peninsula. What about a place to eat? I think we like the idea of having a place in the kitchen where we can uh, sit and eat without having to go to the dining room to sit down every time we want to have a meal. Okay. Will stools address that, or do you actually need like a lower table in We're the kitchen? We're worried about kids and stools. I, think. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> the stool's usually here yeah. and thereabouts. So something that accommodates the fact that we're going to have small kids. Let's go back in. And how do Patrick and Eva want it to look and feel? Do they share a vision? Do you guys generally agree, disagree? I think we agree. I think we, we, do agree. Uh, we like the same look for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. Let's remember that. And what about the cracks in this beam? We've got to check that out. My gut says this is a big job. You want to relocate the stairs, then you want a door and a mud room, and we also need a space at sort of regular table height for the kids, kids eating. Right. Okay. No problem. It's, yeah. <laughs> Get on that. Basic cake. And we've got two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Tommy. <laughs> We've got to kickstart this project pronto. Stretch to the limit. I think Tommy can handle this one too, if he measures up. It's gone too far, Tommy. Oh my god. Well, better that than a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. All right, Patrick. Patrick all right. Now, for construction matters, Dean's our contractor. I don't think it's anything major. Yay! Okay. <laughs> he hits a home run soon after arrival. We have lots of room to put in a beam here. Great, because then we can put lighting in Inside underneath that. here, and yeah. then you keep the whole character yeah. in this room. Renovate and decorate. Eva and Patrick are jumping in feet first. And it's up to us to make this project go swimmingly. In order for Dean to give us a bit of a quote, mm -hmm. we've got to come up with a rough layout. That could change a little bit through the process, he said, but he just needs something to go on to give us a ballpark. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. If we could do a long run of cabinetry, three little stools here, your countertop and your oven could be directly below it, and your dishwasher could be right here. Then you can run a long run of cabinetry the entire way, right? Work with this a little bit, mm -hmm. and let's see how it shakes out. Layout is important, as is the overall look. A lot of decisions to make all at once. I'm thinking about putting in an onyx backsplash because we'll barely require any of it, and it'll look gorgeous when you see in from the dining room or the living room, but everything else is gonna have to be really hard-wearing and functional. This is very sort of honeycomb. Okay. Which is kind of neat. So originally what I was talking about was doing something in the cabinetry. Right. Rich sort of mahogany tone. Do we do that and then have cream everywhere else? Or do we go sort of lighter tone? A slightly kind of creamier. Cream tone. Sure. And just go layered cream on cream on cream. Or do we go one step further and say, okay, well, the cabinets that are going to be out in the dining area, right. should those be in the dark, the dark so they're way out here. One thing that's been consistent has been the contrast between dark and white I find very striking. And then I was thinking maybe for counters, instead of doing something like, you know, your kind of classic creme of marfil or, or granite, maybe you go for something like that. What? I think it looks like cat barf. <laughs> That does not look like cat. You don't even have a cat. Do you even know what cat marv looks like? No. When you go show it, you cannot. I promise you I won't tell her it's cat sick. That'll influence her. Initially, that one sort of out, just a little too, I don't know, what pinky, reddy, whatever there. That's your favorite? <laughs> no, what? but I think it's Sarah's favorite. Right now, all their walls are cream, but they've got red accents in the drapes and in some pillows and what have you. What Maybe we take a stronger color and wrap it all the way across the outer wall, just for a little bit of punch. Mm -hmm. I think that could work. You're okay with yeah. that? She's a smart girl. She's, yeah, she has yeah. a future in yeah. this business. <laughs> and what does our renovating couple think? You don't like this one? Not so much. Why? It looks too yellow. I you think like this one's point? too yellow. It's just too sort of yellowy looking. 
I think we agree. I think we, we, do agree. Uh, we like the same look for the most part. Yeah. All right, I'll call Tommy. We'll <laughs> start over, I guess. Eva and Patrick are wiping the slate on their kitchen and dining room. Everything, the countertops, the cupboards, the lighting, all of it. We just don't like any of it. Okay. We thought they were looking for lots of color. Like, I really am so in love with the look of that. She's a smart girl. She's, yeah, it's just too sort of yellowy looking. Which brings us back to almost mm, square one. I think that now what we're looking at is executing a beige kitchen and looking at it from that angle and saying, how do we get a beige kitchen to be chic and different and interesting and not boring? Okay, for all of the fixed elements, yep. we'll keep it simple, which is sort of the way we normally approach it. Yes, absolutely. And um, have all the fixed elements on a really nice, kind of calm, creamy cafe au lait, you know. I like the sound of that. And then say to them, okay, now we'll do what you want, but now let us have a bit of fun and let's try and push you a little bit out of your comfort zone and think about some wow accessories. Okay. So if I was I really that, worried that you were going to completely lose your excitement I gonna, oh, when I said oh, now it's a beige kitchen. And with that, Tommy meets with Eva and Patrick at her store to push the project forward. Like to me right now, it looks like a very big, bold pattern that's going to like yeah. really stand out. And I just don't know that I like that. But. We can commit to some sort of onyx without a doubt because I do think it's beautiful and I think um, it can. I quite like that. Me too. Yeah. Like I think that's beautiful. No, that looks great. I love that. And I like it a lot too. Yeah. I think that looks fabulous. We do have demo starting in a couple of days. Right. So we should try to make our decisions in a timely manner, but I don't by any means expect you to tell me right now that this is what we're doing. But okay. we'll sit with it tonight and we'll get back to you tomorrow. You know, Sometimes it takes a lot of meetings to get a project off the ground. Now it's time to get busy. Ah, there's nothing like good demolition. Dean and his crew rip this place back to a blank canvas. While they play in the dust, Tommy and I check out chairs for the new kitchen peninsula. I think that's too contemporary. I think this one's really cute. A little Louis, is it comfortable? Try it. It's, oh, it's extremely comfortable. Or what about this? Because you have to think about how you're gonna process it from the back. Nice lattice back, and if this was dark, dark, dark stain. I like the nail head detail. I like the nail head too. It traditionalizes and it a little bit. It's good because they've got the rail, right? One final option, backless, and it's just a perch. This reads as kitchen to me. Whereas that reads as dining room. As more dining room, more chic furniture. We'll show them and see what they think. Okay. And what about the new cupboard doors? Is this door more expensive than Same this price. door? Same price. And how about this door? Same price. And how about this door? Same price. The bead detail will complement the bead detail that's on all the trim work in the house. So for my money, I'd go with that one. These doors cost a bit more than originally planned, but a custom kitchen can't be had for peanuts. The day they start demolition, we've already started making your kitchen more expensive. Oh, we're going to be popular. Oh, the demolition will be so cheap. They're not going to run into any problems. It's all going to be just fine. There was wires left live behind the wall. These wall sconces were like this. Oh, my just goodness. Just left, left open, just covered up. This is turning into a bit of a mess. There's a bathroom downstairs that Eva didn't want to touch. Hmm. That bathroom is a disaster. That's going to have to be touched. That's not all the bad news. After taking out the drywall, we noticed that there's no tar paper behind the insulation, so we have to take it all out. This is all mold buildup. Because if there's mold buildup here, it's gotta be all over the basement. And the grand total? Drywall, taping, painting, trim work. Actually, five five thousand might even be conservative. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so before we go, we're gonna have to draw lots for who explains this to Patrick and Eva, because I don't know if I'm too excited about that. Patrick and Eva's first ever Reno is revealing some nasty surprises. There was wires left live behind the wall. But yeah, no, it should be like clockwork. I'm thinking. Yeah, because if there's mold build up here, it's gotta be all over the basement. How much do you think that's gonna cost? Uh, five, 5,000 might even be conservative. Oh. <laughs> it's a huge, huge drag. We knew that we had some problems last winter 
we had our pipes freeze on us one cold night. And uh, so honestly, every time they tear down a wall, I'm terrified of what they're going to find. We now need to take a really hard look at our budget and see if there's anywhere that we can shave it down because $5,000 has to be allocated. It's got to come from somewhere. We've all got to be on the same page moving forward with the new plan. Right now, I see there being some concerns with the layout. It looks a little tight in certain areas, and it is tough to look at planks on the floor and envision a countertop and cabinets and everything. So if you want to do this at 18, 16, as it stands now, we've, we're, it's tight. I hope we don't have to shimmy through it for the rest of our, uh, our time in the house. Well, I think I'll just come back and chalk it out, tape it out, and leave it for you to walk through it. All right. At the same time, we've got to find $5,000 worth of savings. Would I be better off just doing two doors and forget the panel? That will save you a bit of money too. But then again, it's a different look. It all depends on the look you want. <laughs> yeah, well, the look I want ended up being twice as much as the budget I have. <laughs> if you want to eliminate the baseboard, crazy. But you know what? That's not a huge cost. It's not a huge cost. It's not a huge cost. Leave it. Still looking for those savings. The wainscoting, the recess wainscoting is going to be a huge portion of savings. Okay. Huge. So huge. Massive? Well, we're talking maybe four or five grand. Excellent. I think we're getting back on track. I'm feeling like Eva's, even Patrick's kitchen is right off the rails right now. They're really angry that things have gotten out of control. I think they will be pleased in the end. We just have to make sure that we help them spend their money wisely so that when they get to the end, they're not looking at a kitchen that cost them more than they could afford. You're, you're gonna be in your kitchen every day. You can't afford to feel ill about the amount of money you spent on it. We're trying our best. And you know, things always look better once new drywall goes up. I can feel the positive energy. The drywall is up. The lighting plan looks fantastic, and I actually think that we've really finally turned a corner on that project. For the first time in weeks, I feel like we're moving forward instead of backward. And even our clients are happy. It's fun to see the stuff in front of the walls rather yeah. than the stuff behind the walls. Are we having a picnic? You brought we're a nice woolly blanket. We're having a tailgate party. Eva's kitchen, cabinetry. tree. Done. I agree. Now we need to come up with a wall color. Let's do Ceylon ivory. Let's do vanilla. In the hallway. And let's do pastry. Let's get three samples. Hi. How are you? So this is option number one for the dining room. Right. This one is just slightly darker right. and just slightly warmer. This is to go from the hallway mm -hmm. through to the main body of the kitchen. You like this one the most. Yeah. And then of those two, we'd like to go towards the darker. My only concern with that color is to me it looks a little like peachy. Better than yellow? There is from a bit here. Of peach from here. I you think like this one's one? too yellow. It's just too sort of yellowy looking. But remember that you have sort of an orangey, reddy color in your drapes. Yeah, no, I know. So once they're up, the peach might make more sense. I think it's good. You do? I do. Okay. About two weeks later and we're in overdrive. We're pushing so hard that Dean's dragged his own dad out of retirement to help out. He helped me out before. Mm -hmm. Now it is my turn to help him. Acceptable. With the floor done, we can finally install the cupboards. This is starting to look like a kitchen. Wow. Good. Yet something's not quite right. This is not like how am I supposed to put my faucet in here? I don't know why this overhangs so much. It's not supposed to overhang like that. As if that's not enough. What's this nonsense? Hi, Marco, it's Sarah. Good, how are you? Um, I'm just over at Eva's, and we've got a couple of little problems. All the crowns and all the light valances have been installed wrong. So we need to get some new stock sprayed up and get some new spacer boxes made and be ready to reinstall these for Tuesday morning, first thing. Let's see, what'll it be? Shake it, shake it, shake it. <laughs> a day like this calls for something, but definitely not a power outage. So everybody's just sort of standing around here with no power. 
Even Patrick's kitchen reno started like any other. Gone too far. Oh my God. Well, better that than a wardrobe malfunction. On a high note. But there's mold downstairs and the wrong molding upstairs. We need to get some new stock sprayed up and get some new spacer boxes made and be ready to reinstall these for Tuesday morning first thing. That said, we're determined to bring this kitchen in on our newly reduced budget. Until the flowers are in the vase and everything is in place and the gas is connected and the oven is working and everything is perfect, I don't breathe easy. First things first, get these cabinets dealt with. All of them? All of them. Really? We're going to redo the crown mm -hmm. with the panel. We're going to mm -hmm. bring it all flush to the door and the uh, gables. Yeah. We're going to invert the uh, light valves and bring that all flush with the gables and doors again. Perfect. Would you believe this kitchen is supposed to be finished tomorrow? We've got a ton to do. And no power to do it with. You know that uh, heat wave we've been having? Seems like it's uh, brought along with it uh, some rolling blackouts. So everybody's just sort of standing around here with no power. Seems kind of dim in here. Hey, how are you? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That looks great. It's a little hard to do in the dark. Eventually, the sun went down and killed all chances of getting it done. Luckily, the power has come back the very next day, and we can get Eva and Patrick's kitchen finished as we promised. It's pretty good. These guys are finishing up in the kitchen area, so the three of us can actually clear some of this junk out of here and blitz the dining room and get it set up. Laying rags is the worst. I hate it. Just as fun as it is to see walls come crashing down, it's all worth it because of times like this. The grand finale. And yeah, here we should go like this. In order to have an open plan living space, you have to have one clear vision and it has to be consistent. And in this house, when we started out, I felt that the overriding theme and style was tending to be more traditional. What we wanted to do was work with all the architectural features in the house and draw that out. Uh, one of the things that we love about the cabinetry that we've put on the dining room side of the room is that uh, it's really kept the formal look of the dining room. It was quite a formal room before. Does ice wine go on its side? This is actually our first home and this was our first real reno. And the experience was emotional. It was long. Um, but now that you see it all done, it really, really was worth it. No renovation is ever easy. And your first renovation will always be the most stressful and emotional. You know, the amazing thing is we came in on time and on budget after a whole lot of disasters downstairs. Actually, 5,000 5, might even be conservative. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. We actually spent a huge amount of time working with the budget in order to be able to have a look that appeared as though we'd sacrificed nothing, like beautiful crystal knobs, stone countertops, and an onyx backsplash. None of that would have happened unless we had been just you know, down to the wire and looking at every single penny in our cabinetry budget to make sure that we could achieve an overall finished project that looked like this.